they get them. You eating pumpkin's food? That's not yours. You know that's not yours. They have a good system going. Pumpkin licks all the juices out of the bowl and the kitten comes around and she gets the solids. Yeah, it's a good system. Y'all got worked out. Less cleaning for me to do. I don't mind it. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Do you want to? You're acting. You're just standing by the door. Did you not actually want out? What are you doing? No? You changed your mind? Come on, Topes. It's a beautiful day. You don't feel like it? <laughs> Come on, Toby. Oh, you just want me to open the window? You just feel like watching the nature channel? I can do that. Enjoy the nature channel. You'd rather just stare out the window than actually come out here? Okay, that's fine. Suit yourself, Toby. So this week's video, I mentioned last week that I was supposed to be gutting the patio and having it refin refinished, restained and sealed, new colorant put in, and just a whole fun transformation kind of thing. I got going on that video yesterday. I was splitting it up into two days. I decided I was going to clean off one half and then I'd clean off the other half. So things are looking really nice down on the other end. Look at that. See? Nothing down there. It will, it'll make more sense when you actually get to see that video. Thing is, I talked to the people who were supposed to be doing this. They didn't give me a date. They just said, we'll be there late next week. Which that's, It doesn't really work all that well with me. I tend to be someone who prefers to know when someone's coming over like just get a date date would have been nice but eventually finally heard back from them and they said oh we're gonna come out next week so the video i've been working on this week that was supposed to be out and right now while you're watching this one that's not what's well, not happening we got a little last minute making something up <laughs> i could release half that video i suppose in place of this one i thought about doing that but what's the point of that i think it'd be more fun to watch the whole process get everything cleaned off and then get to see the new colorant all in one video this just i don't know i think it would be awkward to be like hey i cleaned it up okay now you have to wait a week to see the results because i'm not the one who's going to be out here working so it's going to be a very quick before and after once all the cleanup is done it just it'd be weird so instead of that what i've decided to do is just just pick up the camera and start talking and hopefully a video will come together might be fun to hit up a nursery the green i keep wanting to say the green escape greenscape nurseries here in st louis i think their tropicals have rolled in and if you don't snatch up the bananas and alocasias basically right when they come in you're not getting them at least not for a decent price so if you pop out there see what they have not an ideal time to be buying plants because I'm trying to get things off of the patio, I'm not putting more things onto it. Although we're gonna have more lows in the 30s. I think the low tonight's like 34. So anything I buy is gonna have to be stuffed in the gross space, which also is not ideal. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I outlined <laughs> the lights, outlined, was playing around with things, trying to get them set up to see where they need to go. And, and yeah, it looks terrible. Hey, Tobes, did you enjoy watching the nature channel? You're silly, Toby. You, the second I close the window, you show up. Well, that's, I don't know what to tell you, kitten. Snooze, you'll lose. I'll open it up later when I get back. Okay, come on, let go. There we go. Pardon the dirty hood, you know maple trees they're always dropping stuff welcome to the nursery it was a beautiful day you had a lovely shot of the dusty maple leaf maple leaf, the junk whatever the, the crud is all over the hood whatever you get the picture there are some flowers hopefully it was nice to look at at the nursery now i don't really need to tell you things are going to be interesting because i'm caffeinating which i have not done in a very 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 long time Love to see it. Twelve ninety nine. It smells so good in here. Everything's so fresh. Farfugiums, alocasias. I don't know how much I need to talk. You'll see it. We have a little ring of fires. Twenty four ninety nine. By Pinedefida, begonia. I like the texture. See that? Full tray of Siam rubies and the fiestas over here. Oh, I'm so happy right now. It smells so good. Like fresh green plants and flowers. Probably the gardenia. That's more than likely what that smell is. The little birds of paradise. Some bananas. Little Cavendish bananas. I'm hoping they have some insets. They usually get some nice ones in this time of year. 
petite pink. Should I swap out the awesome pretty lemons that I have sitting by the steps on the patio with one that's already in flower? Seems like a dumb thing to do. Why spend the money? And also, I really prefer the deeper pink flowers on the oleanders. It'd be nice to just have some color out there, but does it matter? I don't think it does. It's so cool out, it's gonna stop flowering, right? The calypsos. Those. Nice deep pink. Beautiful flowers. Oh, Ixoras. Ixoras would look cool by the steps. If you know what I'm talking about, the steps are the things I was standing on earlier in the video. That whole area needs to be landscaped, but it's still, it's too cold. I don't need to be doing this yet. Apricot Mandevilla. It's one of my favorites. Get some nice little shrimp plants. Love a plumbago. That's a nice size Cressandra. I don't see them in 10 inch containers all that often. I'm very tempted, oh, but it's gonna be high maintenance for the next several weeks to keep this thing going until it's really nice and warm outside. They like it hot. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Nice end sets, they sell out pretty quick. So I'm gonna grab a couple of those. Thinking about maybe grabbing a couple of these Borneo Giants. The ones that I overwintered, they rotted. My end sets don't look great either. I made the mistake of not checking on them like I should have. And some moisture got down around the bag. I put them in paper bags in my basement from the, I guess it was something from the sump pump. Ran around something and got over, not the sump pump. There's like a, a drain from the AC that goes to a drain that goes to the sump. It's a, it doesn't matter. Somehow moisture got into there bags and they're not looking too hot. The alocasias particularly look terrible. The bananas I might be able to bring back but I figure, you know, I'm gonna grab a couple more just because look at them, they're gorgeous. I'm so happy to see some nice proven winners annuals and just other annuals, summer annuals out this early because I would have, well, <laughs> what was I trying to say there? I've always wanted to get some of my baskets going and like, well now basically and usually I can't find these until about mid-April into early May. Today's not the day though. It's good to know. I'm sure they'll get more. And these are fun. Crazy Tunia Mayan Sunset. These remind me of the Super Tunia Persimmon, but I'm wondering if they might be more sturdy because those persimmons did not do well for me when it got really hot out last summer. They just withered away and died. I wonder how these would do. Those were nice. Alocasia. Oh, uh oh. Seeing temptations up here. Oh. <sighs> Crap, these are beautiful. Can I get all of them? I'm gonna need another cart. There's still a long way to go here. I'm already seeing things through the plants that I'm gonna wanna grab. I'll go ahead and say I'm probably not going to get the giant alocasias today, but um, this is seeming promising. Oh, things are gonna be colorful and very crowded in the garage for the next several weeks. Holy freaking crap, look how big these Janars are. Gynar, you know, purple velvet plants. God, they look so beautiful in person, but on camera, Specifically, look at that shine. Those are stunning. Okay, <laughs> cart's too full to make it down this aisle. Oh, hey, look. The little Borneo Giants for 40 bucks. Those other bigger ones are like 100. This might be a better deal. Yep, yep, mm hmm. I'm in trouble. Big, big trouble. Too many plants. I don't know what to do. <laughs> what am I talking about? I'm a freaking professional with this. I know what to do. Just get another cart. There's a happy little chamois. Look at that. It's like small. Wonder if they have any windmills. No, just Europeans. They look nice. Not as cold hardy as the windmills though. Man, do they rot out fast when they get wet in the winter time. They look nice, also tempting. The Regals, as far as the alocasias go, pretty dang cold hardy. I wonder if maybe against a wall with a ton of mulch might be perennial. I don't know. Yeah, over winter, a lot of things that I shouldn't be able to. That might be one that might come back for me. I don't know if I love them though. That's the thing. If I don't love it, why bother? People love their olive trees right now. Look at the little tiny pineapples. Those are cute. Staking cute. Love a pineapple. This looks so much better than the fake ones that are trending all over the place online that are already sticking into their homes. I mean, as far as fake plants go, the olive trees, they don't look too bad. 
and there's a significant price difference. You don't have to water the fake ones, obviously, but they're so much more full and happy. <laughs> happy. Maybe don't need to personify them quite that much. All right, let's pick out a few of these Borneo giants. When I'm picking out alocasias, the main thing I'm looking for is how sturdy things are at the base. I don't want to move them around too much. I'm not trying to damage the nursery stock, but I want to see how much wiggle they have down low, how much girth is down there at the base, and uh, if they have offshoots. If they have offshoots and they're nice and sturdy with a thick base, it's usually an indication that they have a good root system and they're ready to go up into a larger container. You can feel the container. It's nice and firm. This is a good one. Leaves look pretty good. Oh, look at this. That's a cute croton. That's, well, you can't see it yet. It's called red banana, and here's the croton. That's fine. I like that a lot. Really good texture to them. Nice color. They kind of remind me of the mother and daughter, the spoon, whatever you want to call it, sort of in between, between those and the Picasso. Those are fun. I don't want them, but they're fun. Okay, I'm going to pick out the rest of my things here. I'll go back to the house, have a look at what I got. I think you pretty much saw everything already at this point, but get it set up and spread out, and then I'll have to stick them back in the garage at some point. I was going to like go through and show all the perennials and everything, but I've already filled up two carts. So it's probably time to call it a day. Okay, I just remembered, I told my little sister I'd look for some hydrangeas for her. You just like that view of the ground? Did you enjoy that? Was that nice, nice camera work? Oh, glad I decided to do this. This is nice. Oh, the color. These look nice together. The cedar and the magnet. You get it. And early for hydrangeas if they have them they're just going to be twigs in a pot but that's okay i'd be really surprised i'm trying to find some limelight primes which is a limelight just smaller they're supposed to bloom earlier than the regular limelight and uh, i think they pink out faster than the regular limelights do yeah i'm not seeing anything hydrangea lots of japanese maples and azaleas nice big akubas it's not the mr gold strike just your regular variegated akubas i don't see them this big very often i mean a lot of the time the nurseries don't even carry them i'm starting to see some more zone 7 stuff here which is exciting not here specifically just around the places that i've been seeing some more zone 7 stuff these are neat i like these it's a zone 5 laurel that's really hardy five by four very hardy evergreen shrubs, shiny dark green foliage with new growth boosting lovely bronze red coloration. Good choice for hedges, accent plant, yeah. Look at that. That's beautiful. Not quite, but it's nice to see it. Oh, maybe. Here's some quick fires. <sighs> Dang it, I was ready to go home. I don't feel like buying these. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm glad they have them, but I need a few looks like they have at least two and i see another one all right i'm gonna grab these and then go back to the house and we can look at some plants doesn't it look nice i know you can see the pots from, from up above the view is absolutely beautiful he's having a good time it's starting to get dark out so i don't know how long i'm gonna be able to keep this but you've pretty much seen everything right i think at the nursery there are a few things to show can at least get in with some better close-ups borneo giant right here not much to say about that right it's got to do some growing. Grabbed two of those. Same thing with the end sets back here, the Morelli eyes. They have some growing to do. I have one over here, one over there on the other side. These are just randomly placed. They're not staying like this. Nice and big though, for what they are, especially compared to the price of the other ones. Yeah, the thing is, if I had gotten the other ones, they were over a hundred bucks. And yes, they were much bigger in the sense that they were really stretched out for the light. But the bases of them, weren't substantially bigger really at all just a little bit the root mass in theory was bigger on them because they're in much larger containers i think they're in 10 gallon pots these are three yeah 10 inch yeah three gallon containers so from that perspective going to get a lot more growth out of those bigger ones potentially if they were fully rooted out into those but i don't know the juice just wasn't worth the squeeze for me to go ahead and get those really really big ones when i could get the smaller ones for way 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 less and they're borneo giants these things they grow like insanity these might be two months maybe three tops behind in growth compared to those other ones that i plan on just i'm gonna fertilize the heck out of them and they'll grow like crazy so they'll be caught up with those other ones in no time the cordelin freticuses absolutely stunning aren't these beautiful gorgeous harlequin that's what those are harlequin's kind of like a giant kiwi the kiwi that's an awesome cordial in front of casa and now i have four of these they're awesome beautiful 
They do tend to bleach out the Harlequin, I've noticed, if they get too much sun. So I might need to be careful with these, having them over here where I have them set up. I think for now it's probably okay, but I don't know, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it. None of this is permanent either, right? I mean, it's March. It's way too cold for these to be out here. Well, I say that, but it's really not. The pool's heated, there's a patio right here, and that's all going to add a few extra degrees of protection. And just about everything out here is fully hardy into the 30s, just not for too terribly long. They'll need to stay frost-free. I'm referring to everything here, not like a single plant. All these guys. And it's the daytime temps too. So it's gonna drop into the 30s. I would like for it to be popping up into the 70s during the day. Though for now, I'll probably go ahead and pull these back into the grow space. I just, I wanted to set them up like this for now, just so I could, you know, have a little taste of summer. Oh, and Chinese fan, I just oh, stubbed my toe on a seashell. Chinese fan palms, grab two of those. Nice big ones too. I had a Chinese fan palm right here last year. I have like pretty much every year had a fan palm there at Turbo. Don't do it, no pull. No pull, you just had a bath. You're not getting in there. Come here, come on. Good boy, just resist temptation. Come over here, get up on your climb. That's what we call the steps. Cool. You just stay there for now, good boy. The uh, fan pumps, Chinese fan pumps, very cold hardy. They can die all the way back to the ground in zone six and return with a good mulch. I didn't feel like mulching them up. So I dug the one up that I had that died and grabbed a couple more. I will maybe mulch them up this year. The thing is when you grow them that way, you generally don't get any growth out of them the following year until June. So if they die all the way to the ground in the winter, gonna be waiting a long time for them to throw a few leaves out. So uh, I figure it's best to just get new ones like I did this year, or ideally dig them up and put them into the grow space. Oh, and the seminal pink hibiscus. It doesn't have any flowers on it yet. The seminal pink is one of my favorites. So they have a nice bubblegum pink flower on them. There's a picture. You saw the picture at the nursery, right? Pretty sure you did. It's, just, it's a big bubblegum pink flower, slightly darker center, but it's a pretty even tone overall. It's one of the classic old school hibiscus. Another Chinese fan palm. So yeah, there's two Chinese fan palms, two of the Borneo Giants, four of the Cordelin Fruticasas, and then two of the Enset Morelii, the red bananas. Now, I do still have the two Ensets from last year that were down there on that side of the patio. I mentioned that they were looking like they're having some issues with rot. I think I'm going to give those a big cutback, get them potted up, and uh, probably treat it with a fungicide so that maybe will mean I'll end up with four this year. I don't know, I can't say for sure, just gonna have to wait and see what they do. They grow so quickly, that's not the end of the world. If the ones I have don't make it, because I was able to find a couple more, but I mean, you know, overwinter the things, ideally, they would survive, right? I guess what I was trying to say though, though is that the ones that I have since, I'm gonna have to cut them back pretty drastically. They're not gonna be that much bigger than these, even though they're older. So here we are with those, that's okay. Again, these, the Borneo Giant Alocasias, they grow so quickly. Once the heat arrives, hopefully in May, you never know around here, but hopefully it'll be nice and warm in April and May, then they'll take off and get growing. But until then, probably gonna keep them in the grow space, at least off and on. If I'm noticing the temperatures are going to drop below uh, 35, 38, somewhere in there, then I'll pull them back in, and otherwise I'm gonna keep them out here and let them get some natural light. I'm crazy about these. The Harlequin is one that I have not always been able to find. Actually, it's been several years since I was able to find them, and I've been getting the Kiwis instead, which are much smaller, very similar appearance, not quite as much pink. The Harlequin, though, I mean, every single leaf. Look at that. Look at the giant pink chunks on that one. It's gorgeous. Big bands of pink back there on that one. One of my all-time favorites of their quarter ones. That's why I got four of them, because I just have such a hard time finding them in a nice big size like these. They're absolutely beautiful. They're nice and big. That one's down on the ground that's coming up fairly high. These are probably close to three feet tall, maybe 30 inches, somewhere in there. Uh, and I did grab two of those petunias, the Mayan Sunset Crazy Tunia, which I assume is probably a Calabrac Petunia hybrid cross situation. I don't know. Gonna grow them out and see what happens. And then have one little perennial here, <laughs> just the one, and it is a pulmonaria. Isn't that a beautiful pulmonaria? That's, they're all beautiful, but this one has especially nice, bright bubblegum pink flowers on it, and the variety is called, I can't be able to see that, let me try up here, maybe. Come on, come on, don't wanna have to type it on the screen. Shrimps on the Barbie. That's what this one's called. A bubblegum pink slash fuchsia pink. I know those aren't the same color, but in my eyes, they're not that different. One's just more saturated than the other. Excellent shade perennial for the springtime. They like things nice and cool and they flower. 
fairly early. I'm probably gonna pop that underneath a mimosa tree. That uh, looks so good. I wish it actually was summer. Kind of just living over here in fantasy land. You having a good time? Wants me to throw that in the pool so badly. Again, none of this is staying here. It's too cold to have the tropicals out. I'll just be taking it day by day. I'm not gonna move anything else out here. Not for at least probably three weeks, maybe four, something like that. He's taking over the camera, huh? Oh, good, yes, that's what that's what my lens needed. Okay, apparently gonna be finishing up this video with this nice bokeh effect that is really just my dog spit. Do you like that? Cinematic or just dog spit? I'm gonna go with just dog spit. Get back to her, I gotta clean my lens off now. Better, yes, better. As I was saying, don't be staying here. I do think that the cordelins I will probably end up keeping in the house instead of the grow space just because these are mealybug magnets and I haven't seen a lot of them in the grow space. It's been probably the best year ever as far as that's concerned. But I just, I don't want to get something going that I'm going to have to fix later. When they show up on the plant, it becomes so hard to get them off of the cordelins. Other plants, like if they get on the banana or the elephant ear, they have really big leaves. There aren't a lot of crevices. It's fairly easy to treat it. It's not the case with these guys. It's a lot more work. So they will be going in the house, probably like just around the corner, really, whenever it's below, like I said, 35, 38, somewhere in there. Of course, these are tropicals. They prefer to be kept warmer than that, but I figure it's okay in the fall time. They're always out here and don't usually show any damage at all until we start to drop below 30. They usually can even take some light frost. Talking about the cordial and not the Borneo Giant. That one's been more sensitive to the cold, but the NSET, they can take a light frost. The Chinese fan palms, the one I had out here last year, never finished that thought. Okay, back on it. The one that I had growing right here last year, it did not die until uh, mid-January or whenever it was that, that horrible cold came through and it was like minus 12 Fahrenheit out here. That killed it off, but it had plenty of nights in the teens, even took some snow. It was an exceptionally cold hardy Chinese fan palm. Usually around 20 degrees is when I start to see damage on them. I'd be pretty surprised if we dropped to 20 degrees at any point from this point moving forward this year, but hey, who knows? I don't know. You never know around here. When you're smack dab in the middle of the country, you get it from up north and from down south, so every day's a little bit different. I have another palm coming in the mail that I ordered, I guess you could say by accident. I had ordered a Chinese fan palm because I didn't know if I'd be able to make it to the nursery while they had these. The way it works at a lot of nurseries, and especially around here, is they get in a big shipment of tropicals early on in the year, and those sell out, and then they get in another shipment. And that next shipment, they're usually a lot smaller, and for some reason, I think because they probably come from a different vendor, almost definitely why, they cost a lot more. So I like to snatch them up while they're still reasonably priced. So I can get them for like $24.99 as opposed to $49.99 for plants that are a little bit larger than the ones that will be coming in the next few weeks. But I wasn't sure if I'd be able to find them because like I said, I had to be able to make it there in time because I would imagine if not this weekend, next weekend, those will probably all be gone. The red bananas will definitely be gone. So I'm glad I grabbed a couple of those. I ordered a fan palm just in case I couldn't find the Chinese fan palm. What I didn't realize that I had done is I had two different fan palms, two different Livestonas, which is what the Chinese fan palm is. Where is, here's another one. There's a better shot right there. Chinese fan palm, the round, shiny leaves. Livestona chinensis. I also had a Livestona rotundifolia, which I think has been reclassified to Cerebus. I'll talk about more at another time because I accidentally ordered it. I had the, I removed the wrong one from the cart and ordered the rotundifolia, which I don't think they like as much sun. I don't know if I would be putting it here in place of the Chinese fan palm or not. Either way, I have the Chinese fan palms in case I think that that would do better here. Otherwise, the rotundifolia will be going here. At a smaller size, they look fairly similar, except the rotundifolia has a much larger, more rounded leaf. They're pretty neat looking. Something we just have to wait and see, give it some time. Would it come in the mail? Yeah, you're being a good boy. He's been waiting for me to pick up this toy and play with him. I think it's time for me to reward his good behavior. I'm gonna play with the dog for a while, get this video edited, and then gut this half of the patio and clean everything off for next week's video. It's been a busy day. I wanna hear shit about the mess. I just told you, I'm cleaning it all up. Everything's going, all of it. It's gonna be nothing left out here. I love the way everything looks from around all the different corners, all the different angles, even from in the house coming outside. This looks so pretty. I'm so ready. For, I know y'all are too. So ready for summer. I was thinking, wouldn't it look good if I could find some really small little neoregelia, like fireballs? One of the ones that offshoots really quickly and tuck that down into one of these corners. 
around here like it's just randomly grown out of the I don't, we don't need to talk about this so we can, I can hold off until it's actually time to put tropicals outside I'm just in fantasy land over here because I'm surrounded by these beautiful plants Hope everybody's doing well having a great day a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you comment down below say hi I love talking to everybody you're starting to get rolling with your tropicals seed starting probably all kinds of fun stuff going on and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye